if you've ever tried playing PS1, PS2 or Nintendo 64 games on an emulator, then you know that you can improve the settings and graphics beyond the scope of what the original machines could do, with stuff like higher resolutions and anti-aliasing. But when you play an 8 or 16-bit system, the games will always look the same no matter which settings you use. But what if it didn't have to be this way? What if you could play an NES game on an NES simulator and improve its visuals or sound quality beyond the scope of the original console? Enter Messen. Messen is often considered as one of the best NES simulators and it has the option to apply HD packs and overlays over the existing NES ROMs. Just to be clear, these are not ports or remakes. These are the original NES ROMs running with a graphical overlay on top of them. You can think of these like texture packs in a PC game. The advantage here is that the game runs, controls and plays just like the NES originals because they are the NES originals. These filters have to be created by fans and so far only a few projects exist, most of which are still incomplete. But I thought it would be fun to run through a selection of these games and see how they run. So let's get started! This is Shatterhand for the NES. Why yes, this is the second time in a row that I'm covering this game. And no, I did not plan for this. But right off the bat I think we can see the graphical improvements. The game looks and runs just like the original Shatterhand, but now the colors are way better. In fact, graphically, the game now looks more like an MSX2 game or maybe even like an early PC Engine game. And the best part, like I said before, it looks like Shatterhand and it plays like Shatterhand. Because it is Shatterhand! It's the original ROM with a graphical overlay that improves the game. Even the cutscenes and stage selection screen were improved with better colors. Unfortunately though, some levels do seem to be incomplete, like this stage for example, where the backgrounds have the improved colors but your enemies all use their original sprites. Not only that, but my main character is half improved and half original. Man, that is so weird to look at. I don't know if this is a graphical glitch or if the project is just still in development, but either way, it does highlight how much better the game looks with the new and improved graphics. So yeah, even though this is incomplete, I'm gonna mark this one as a definite improvement. But not every project is as in-depth as Shatterhand. This is Bomberman HD and… I mean, it looks fine I guess. The lines are sharper, the colors are better and the sprites look closer to a 16-bit system than they do to an 8-bit game. But honestly, I never cared much for the first Bomberman game, as I feel the formula was still pretty rough during this period, with power-ups being few and far between and the enemies just weren't very interesting. And to be fair, there's really not much that a graphical overlay can improve from the original simply because the original game looks so basic. It's a decent effort and the sprites look good, but yeah, it's really not worth the hassle. But still, I'm gonna mark this one as an improvement, but you're better off playing, literally, any other Bomberman game instead. This is Donkey Kong HD. I was a little curious as to how this game would look considering the title screen is using background graphics from the Super Nintendo version of Donkey Kong Country. And… oh. Oh no! Yeah, this is a bit of a common issue with these HD packs. Many try to go so far to impress you, but only manage to achieve the exact opposite. I mean, stylistically this is all over the place. You play as Pepper Mario, but Donkey Kong is just his regular 3D self. 
Well, Pauline is like an in-between version of the two. Then you have these horrific background images that were smeared for some reason and the game becomes a visual mess of clashing art styles. It all just comes off as rather amateurish and makes the project look like a cheap flash game. Yeah, this one is just not worth it. <laughs> After seeing how poorly Donkey Kong turned out, my expectations for Donkey Kong Jr. weren't exactly the highest. But lo and behold, this one is actually pretty good. It keeps the same style as the NES game, but improves the colors and sprites while being somewhat faithful to the NES original. Now, it basically looks like a late generation NES game, or maybe a port of Donkey Kong Jr. to 16-bit computers. Personally though, I wish they had done something with the background instead of just painting it all grey. But then again, considering what happened to the original Donkey Kong, maybe this was a blessing in disguise. Honestly, my biggest problem with this game is that it's Donkey Kong Jr. And uh, I'm not a big fan of this game. I mean, I liked the original Donkey Kong game just fine, but the sequel just never clicked with me. But still, I'll mark this one down as an improvement over the original NES version. <laughs> Next up, we have Castlevania 30th Anniversary Edition, and this one is a clear graphical improvement over the original NES game, while staying faithful to the 8-bit version. And while I'm not entirely sure, I think some of these sprites were taken from the Nokia Java versions of the game, except they now run at a higher resolution. The problem is, uh, there's no music. Yeah, I don't know what happened here, but for some reason, all the music was removed, and I don't get why. The sound effects are here, and they sound just fine, but the music is completely gone. Did the developer mean to replace the soundtrack with something else? Is it a bug with the ROM? An emulation issue? Who knows? I have no idea. All I know is that Castlevania without its iconic music is simply not Castlevania. And that's a shame too, because graphically, this now looks like an MSX2 game and I definitely dig the style. But as it is though, I can't in all good conscience recommend this one. Pass. Castlevania 30th Anniversary, however, is not the only HD NES project of this game. We also have Castlevania HD, and this one is much more interesting. I mean, just look at it! This looks like if someone ported the original Castlevania game to the Sharp X68000 and I'm all here for it. What's even more interesting is that all of these graphical assets you're seeing right now were all officially created by Konami. Basically, the game is using all of the graphical assets from yet another Nokia Java port of Castlevania. Remember my Castlevania video when I said there were three Java ports and I just could not find one of them save for a couple of screenshots online? Yeah, these graphics were taken from that version, and as it turns out, that Java version was also dumped and a few fans were even kind enough to send me the game. But more importantly, this is Castlevania. It looks like Castlevania and it plays like Castlevania, because it's the original Castlevania and Yetrom with a graphical overlay on top. The new graphics did nothing to hamper the gameplay or feel. I will admit there are moments where I don't like this new graphical style and the bad boss from the first level looks way worse this version from a stylistic standpoint. But for the most part the graphics here are a definite improvement that still managed to fit in with the Castlevania lore because, again, the graphics were all made by Konami. In fact, with this style the game feels stylistically much closer to Super Castlevania 4 as well as Akumaju Dracula for the Sharp X68000. 
I do find some musical choices a little questionable though. Like for example, the cutscene of Simon walking towards the castle gates sounds like some garage band for me. I don't know where they got that remix from, but it feels so out of place here. The second level also feels a bit more techno than I'd like, but honestly, these are all minor issues. This one is a definite improvement over the original and is worth tracking down. This is Pac-Man HD, and uh, I wasn't sure what to expect here, and looking at it, you can barely tell the difference between this and the NES version. Basically, the lines seem to have been rounded somewhat, and uh, that's it. That's all it does. I mean, you don't really need an HD pack for that. Multiple emulators already have smudge filters back then that pretty much achieve the same thing, which makes this version feel kinda pointless. Not only that, but the NES version of Pac-Man isn't particularly great. Don't get me wrong, it was decent for the time, but with the arcade version so readily available on Google, including some pretty interesting variations, I kinda don't see the point in coming back to this version, with or without the HD overlay. Yeah, I'm gonna mark this one as pointless. But I'll tell you what isn't pointless, Metroid High Definition. No, this is not Super Metroid you're looking at, this is the original Metroid with the graphics overlaid in a way that makes it look like Super Metroid. You can tell that this is not Super Metroid because of the way Samus moves, and in fact, it kind of highlights the limitations of this overlay technology, namely how most packs usually only overlay graphics over existing frames. You can add new frames of animation, but most projects choose to only overlay over existing ones. And I can see why, as that would make these packs exponentially more difficult to create. So as a result, Samus's leg movement feels a little jerky, but that's because those are the number of frames the original game had. Another interesting thing is that the music and sound effects were either taken from Super Metroid or remixed in a way that sounds like Super Metroid. As a result, just like Castlevania HD, this makes the game feel like a proper prequel to Super Metroid. Not only that, but the tile graphics were ever so slightly changed to make it clearer when they're destructible. But what's even more impressive is that this game also adds a map screen that you can access at any time, which massively cuts down on guesswork or you getting lost. Add to that the fact the game now has a save feature instead of lengthy passwords and I think you just might have the definitive way of playing the original match right here. Though this does mean that I could not try the Justin Bailey cheat code. For the last decade or so, I felt that the original match right hasn't aged well due to it being too cryptic on where you need to go or what you have to do. But these graphical and quality of life improvements bring the original game up to speed with the modern Metroid experience, without having to go the route of a full-on remake like Metroid Zero Mission. If you've always wanted to play the original Metroid or were in the mood to revisit the original game but just could not get past its more, let's say, anachronistic features, then this is the version for you. This is an absolute improvement over the original version. Check it out if you can. HD is a graphics pack for the original NES Kung Fu by IRAM, and uh, yeah, I don't like the way this one looks. The graphics look like they were resized and cleaned up using an AI software, but in doing so, they lost all their charm. In fact, the sprites almost look like vector graphics now, which I'll admit, 
Save for an exception or two, I'm just not a big fan of 2D vector graphics in games. I'll admit that the original NES Kung Fu was a pretty basic title from a graphical standpoint, so maybe there wasn't a lot that could be done here. But man, this is just not for me. As it is now, this just kind of looks like a cheap flash game from the mid 2000s that you'd find on Newgrounds. Yeah, I'll just mark this one as stick with the original instead. Of games that are not improved by graphical overlays, this is Nuts and Milk by Hudson Soft. I used to play this game a lot on my bootleg Famicom when I was a kid, and I really enjoyed it. It's basically a single screen arcade platformer similar to Donkey Kong, except you now have a level editor feature. Sadly, though, this game isn't nearly as good as my memories would have me believe, but it's still decent enough for an early Famicom game, I suppose. Sadly though, this graphical overlay does the game no favors, and it suffers from the same issues as Kung Fu, as it just makes the game look cheap. It's the sort of project you'd find on new grounds back in the day. I feel these graphical overlays are better applied when they basically look like the NES games with a few minor improvements like Shatterhand, or when they make the game closer to the rest of the series like Metroid. But this does neither of those things. Just stick with the original instead. This is Mega Man Super and wow, this is quite an impressive overhaul. It plays and sounds like the original NES Mega Man, but now the graphics have made the full jump to 16-bit and it looks amazing. I'm pretty sure a lot of these sprites were taken from Mega Man The Wily Wars for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, except that this comes without the slowdown or issues found in the Sega version. Well, kind of. Maybe it's just me, but I do think this version has a bit more slowdown than the original NES Mega Man. Or maybe I'm just misremembering how the original game played like. One interesting thing is that some levels now have these computers that you can access and will give you hints on which powers you should use against which robot masters. And at the start of each level, Dr. Light will also give you some helpful hints. I don't think this was particularly needed, but it's still a nice to have and it's all optional, so it's not a big deal. Now, I will say that after playing Mega Man The Wily Wars on the Mega Drive Mini, I gained a massive soft spot for that game. But this NES upgrade is clearly the better version and a definite upgrade over the original. Roll Chan is exactly the same game we just took a look at, except now you play as Roll and the sprockets you collect for points have been replaced with hearts. It's pretty cool that this exists, but otherwise it's really nothing noteworthy from the previous version we just took a look at. Super Mario Bros. Redux is an HD version of the original Super Mario Bros. and... Boy, is it ugly. This is so ugly. I'll give it this. Unlike Donkey Kong at least, the art style here is consistent. But it's consistently ugly. I get that they were going for a new Super Mario Bros kind of vibe, but man, I just can't get over how ugly this is. This is just someone's flash game at this point. Yeah, just avoid this one. Thank <laughs> you. 
Next up, we have Paper Mario Bros. And uh, yeah, it's pretty ugly as well. I think it's a little less ugly than Super Mario Bros. Redux, but I feel this style just does not work for the NES. Or at the very least, it does not work the way it's being portrayed. Something about it, once again, just feels too much like a Flash game. Man, Mario deserved way better than this. Not worth playing. This is Contra Remastered, and I gotta say, I really dig the look of this game. Basically, it seems like they took the backgrounds from Contra 4 for the Nintendo DS and applied it here, and it looks really great. With that said though, once again, the lack of animation frames does hold it back a little, especially when your character is running. But I think that this still looks really good, and it controls just like the NES game, so that's definitely a plus. Unfortunately though, this version only seems to include the first level. Once you hit level 2, it suddenly jumps back to the original NES graphics, although on some parts your character jumps back to the improved sprite. At first, I thought that maybe only the behind-the-shoulder levels featured the original graphics, but once I hit level 3, it became immediately clear that that was not the case. Sure, my sprite and enemies are using the modern graphical look, but with the backgrounds remaining unaltered, it kind of turns the game into a visual mess. I think that once this project is properly completed, it'll be an incredible upgrade over the original, but for now it's probably best to just wait. Ice Climber Remastered. Now this is more like it. The upgrade starts as soon as you hit that title screen, with a nice new background instead of the original black background from the NES. And as soon as you start playing, the graphical upgrades become evident. Everything is clear and familiar, but just a little better. Your Ice Climber looks really good, with nice sprite detail, good animation and great colors. I'm actually not sure how they managed to achieve this idle animation, but it looks incredible. The enemies, platforms and walls aren't quite on the same level as your main character, but are still a clear and definite upgrade over the original. And while it's a shame that the background image does not change or scroll, it still looks better than the original black background. This game is a textbook example of why these HD packs exist. It improves the original while staying true to its art style. This is Ice Climber exactly as you remember it, but prettier. My one complaint here is that it's using the Yeti instead of the seals from the Japanese version. Sorry, but as a kid, I grew up playing the original Famicom version, so that's the one I tend to gravitate towards. But regardless, if you like the original Ice Climber, then this might just be the definitive version. Ninja Gaiden Upgrade, as the name suggests, is an upgrade for the original Ninja Gaiden. Though honestly, I feel that calling this an upgrade might be a little too kind. Don't get me wrong, it looks better than the NES original, but it's not a major update like Shatterhand or Ice Climber. If I had to guess, I'd say the improved sprites and colors were taken from the Super Nintendo remakes of the original trilogy. And to be fair, the cutscenes do look a lot better, but 
I don't know, I guess I just expected a bit more. I can't help but feel like maybe the best would have been to pick and choose between the Super Nintendo and PC Engine versions of Ninja Gaiden and adding them depending on which one performed better for each individual sprite. Regardless, despite the minor upgrade, this is still better than the NES original as the colors are indeed improved, and it does not carry the issues of the Super Nintendo version, namely the awful music, bugs and glitches. I'm gonna tag this one as an improvement, but just barely. Ninja Gaiden Upgrade was followed by Ninja Gaiden 2 Upgrade. I generally feel this one looks a little better than the first one, but these graphical improvements were also taken from Ninja Gaiden Trilogy for the Super Nintendo. So I guess Tecmo just did a better job on the sequel than they did on the first one. Other than that, pretty much everything I just said about Ninja Gaiden Upgrade applies to the sequel. It plays just like the NES game and it does not have any of the sound or gameplay issues from the Super Nintendo version while sports a slight graphical upgrade. This is most likely the best way to play Ninja Gaiden 2, so I'm gonna take this one as an improvement as well. It's Twinbee. Little known fact, I was actually the 14th best Twinbee player worldwide on the Xbox 360 servers. That's not a joke by the way, this is me right there. I used to play this game all the time as a kid on my bootleg Famiclone and man, I loved it two bits. The big issue with the original NES version is that it was an early Famicom game, so graphically it looked rather basic. But this version looks far better. In fact, it kind of looks like a late NES game or an early PC Engine title. I would even go as far as to say that Twinbee Remastered looks better than the arcade version. This is the version Nintendo fans deserved when Twinbee was first brought over to the Famicom. And while it's a shame that I had to wait over 30 years to play this, it was definitely worth the wait. Twinbee Remastered is the definitive version of the original Twinbee and yet another great example of what can be achieved with these HD graphical packs. As soon as you boot up that title screen, you know you're in for something good with The Legend of Zelda Remastered. The incredible pixel art and remade music immediately made it clear that this is going to be a high effort project and man, just look at it! This looks incredible! Many of the backgrounds seem to have been taken from A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo, though your character sprite is clearly different. I actually have no idea where it was taken from or if it was created exclusively for this version. It's kind of funny too because I found myself striking at the bushes hoping to find rupees. I genuinely forgot that this was the first Zelda game while I was recording footage. It's that good of a remaster. Then you have the music and sound effects which are made to mimic the Super Nintendo style, so as a result the game ends up feeling a lot closer to its 16-bit counterpart. Gameplay-wise there are no changes or improvements like we saw in Metroid. Well, I guess the map on the top left corner is a bit easier to read, but that's about it. I have already stated in this video that I generally prefer projects like Shatterhand, Ice Climber or Twinbee because they improve the games while keeping true to the art style of the originals. But but some series like Metroid and Zelda are so iconic that when properly done surpass even those projects. And to me, 
This has become the definitive way of playing the original Legend of Zelda. Whether you just could not get into the original because of its age, or you love the original game and want to try something new, if you're only going to try one HD remaster from this video, this is it. This is the one. Well, this and Matt tried or Castlevania, but mainly this one. So, is this an improvement over the original? Absolutely. After playing The Legend of Zelda, I was expecting great things from the sequel, and once again, I was hit with a very impressive title screen. And once you start at Zelda's Palace, just... Whoa! Look at this! This looks incredible! But then... Reality set in. What is going on here? Why is Link constantly changing? Okay, surely it's just one minor problem, right? Well, sadly, no. The truth is, this project is still super early. You've got visual glitches, enemies that become nearly invisible because of the grass, and some enemies are remastered while others are not. But then you reach the towns and that's when the game just completely bursts at the seams. Link is basically just one big glitch at this point, the first town is half remade and half original, your item menu is new but isn't finished, and characters are meant to have portrait screens but it clearly hasn't been properly implemented yet. Here's the thing, this version is set to surpass even the original Zelda, and I am very eagerly awaiting the day it's completed, because the pixel art here looks absolutely incredible. The music and sound effects are still from the original NES version, and ironically, I feel that they do not clash with the updated visuals at all. Now granted, I don't know if they're going to try to emulate the Super Nintendo audio like they did for Zelda 1 Remastered, but I do feel the soundtrack on Zelda 2 is good enough and varied enough to stand on its own. Though we still don't know what the end game is, so it's too soon to call it. Now granted, as I've already said several times, the controls of the game are exactly like the NES version, because, again, this is just the NES version running with a graphical overlay. But the overlay is so unfinished and glitchy that sadly this version is pretty much unplayable. So, is this an upgrade over the original? As of right now, no. But it will be. We just have to wait. There's also a little Nemo HD graphics pack, but as of right now, it only changed the main character, so it's not really worth looking too much into this one, as it's still too early in development. Hopefully though, I can revisit this one sometime later. Also, this is the first time I ever played Little Nemo, how the heck do you take down enemies? Man, if you grew up with a Famiclone, I know you're well familiar with this game. I've yet to see any clone system that did not include Battle City. And good thing too, because Battle City is an absolute classic. Graphically, it was a pretty basic game, but this HD texture pack redraws all the walls and background tiles as well as the tanks. I especially like all the little extra animations on your tank and how the art style is now much more cartoony. Though it is kinda funny because the original game seemed to go for a more realistic style with their tank designs. But regardless, this one is definitely an upgrade. So you might be wondering, with all of these HD NES packs, does the Sega Master System have something similar going on? And the answer to that is sadly no. There's one emulator that allows you to do the same thing as Messin, but it hasn't received any updates since 2009, and it seems that it's never been used for any project. 
The most we have is a couple of screenshots of Alex Kidd from the creator of the emulator himself. Admittedly, I do feel that a lot of Master System games do not need HD packs like Shadowhand, Ice Climb or Twin B because Master System games tend to be more colorful. But I would still like to see projects on the same scope as Zelda, Metroid or Castlevania. But as of right now, there's simply no Sega equivalent. And there you have it, a look at several projects of HD packs for NES games. Are there any games I missed? Let me know in the comments. I'll also be leaving links in the description on where you can get these texture packs. In the meantime, I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters, with a special thank you to Kerry for becoming my newest Patreon backer. Thank you for helping make the channel better. Anyway, I hope you have a great day, bye!